Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefined Show for Adorama TV, I speak with Sally Sargon, named Travel Photographer of the Year by the Australian Institute of Professional Photography. And we discuss how she chooses different gear depending on how and where she travels. Check it out. Hi, Sally, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, lovely to finally talk to you in this format. It is, yes. We have been friends for years. Mm -hmm. But you've been in the photography industry for 27 years, 20, right? Yeah, since yeah. I was five. Since you're five years old, you toddled out, picked up the camera. <laughs> um, and you've worked in nearly every aspect. Like, you're very unique in that respect. And you've worked from, like, obviously not just as a photographer, um, but also in marketing and on the print lab side mm -hmm. and in the event coordination and production side mm -hmm. and the studio operations side, and now really heavily into marketing and video. Mm -hmm. Like So seeing all those components. A lot of different components, and, and 27 years ago it was film. Even. Right, right. So we started in the days of film in the lab and then, yeah, pr pr progressed into digital, um, and then with Jerry Guionis. Yes, I've All heard about that guy, Jerry Giannis, yes, yeah. Yep. Yep. As yeah. his uh, personal assistant, which did involve running the studio, running his workshops, right. um, developing his educational website, all of that sort of thing. So I have seen many aspects of, right. of, of It's funny, you use the term personal assistant, and here in the U.S., that, that would be more considered somebody who runs personal errands and stuff. Oh, okay. And that's oh, not I did all, that too. Yeah, no, also <laughs> did that. So combination, <laughs> and then studio director. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and operations, yeah. Yeah. And um, so in all of those aspects, you've also been consistently shooting quite a lot of travel photography. Mm -hmm. And so you have also, when you talk about coming from digital, film to digital, um, you're also shooting with different equipment when you're doing your travel photography, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when I did start travel photography, I was shooting on film. Yeah. I remember coming back from New York in 2001, and I think I had 10 rolls of 35 mil to process. Yeah. And that was very different right, right. To, to actually come back with all these rolls of film and go through all these photos, which you can't delete then. Yeah. <laughs> so I had all of these photographs of New York, but um, I think... These are 200 ISO, these are more, but yeah. <laughs> but I think the big change came for me when, obviously, the iPhone came out, mm -hmm. and I... I became really interested in some of the apps that came out, the photo apps. Mm -hmm. And uh, many years ago, one of the first apps was Hipstamatic. Yes. And I used that a yes, lot. Yes, I remember this. And yeah. now I look at them and they've got really heavy filters. Yeah, like, those are like, really great. <laughs> <laughs> but I found having the iPhone, such a small tool mm -hmm. um, with me, uh, was great. I do, when I travel, um, I take my Canon with the big lens, which I love. Yeah. Because I actually really enjoy standing on the side of the street with the long lens and just capturing people without them knowing yeah. that you're doing that. Yeah. I remember being in Vietnam, and Vietnamese people were really shy about having their photograph taken. If anyone covered their face, of course, you wouldn't. I wouldn't shoot them. But it was just, it was fun to do that because Vietnam is a place where there's so much happening on the street. Right, state. yeah. And just to see that was really interesting. But now the fact that I don't have to take a big camera anywhere and I've got my phone with me everywhere I go. And you're also um, shooting with the, what, what did you take to Venice last year? You I that took series? the um, Fuji X-T1, mm -hmm. um, which to me is a combination of, say, the Canon and the iPhone okay. because it's still lightweight enough and it fits in my handbag right. um, without taking the big camera because sometimes, to me, you'd have to like leave the hotel with an intention to shoot for the day and after four days of that it was just like yeah. exhausting carrying your yeah. camera everywhere so then there'd be days where I'm having a camera free day right. and of course you'd see the best shots oh on those days. Yeah. so having the Fuji means it's light enough that I can keep it in my purse without carrying all that weight right um, but I still with the what I'm finding now is I'll take the Fuji to shoot the stills yeah um, and I'll shoot video on my iPhone yeah. Um, because and you're I, doing quite a bit of video now. Yeah, I do. I actually, it's a very conscious effort to shoot both. Right. And what I love about the video, and I really found this in Venice, as I came in from the um, airport in the water taxi, mm -hmm. I, t I held up my phone just, it was foggy and it was beautiful, yeah. just to get the canals, and I just held it up outside the taxi. And when I looked at the footage, it, that kind of took my breath away. And I thought, oh, I need to make sure I, I shoot more of this when yeah. I'm here. So I pretty much used the Fuji for the stills mm -hmm. and just kept the iPhone to shoot video. And that was kind of my way of differentiating the two and knowing what I was going to shoot. And, and what I found then coming back from that is to be able to, I did make an Animoto slideshow where I uploaded the video and I uploaded the stills, mm -hmm. um, found some beautiful music that sort of to me said what my holiday was and captured Venice. Yeah. and put them together and I love watching that now. I like watching it all come to life. Yeah. I, see, I, I, yeah. I go back to Venice when I watch it. Yeah. So it's yeah. different now um, as opposed to just having the photos to look at. Right. Um, I feel like I have something more to uh, experience that thing again. What 
were you shooting with when you did the whole um, train through Mongolia, that, that experience? That was my Canon 5D. Okay. And I had the 70 to 200 2.8. Yeah. And I think I took my 24 to 105 as well. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 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 One of the things I found, um, that exact juxtaposition of like, I want to get these beautiful photographs, but I also want to just be free to travel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a tough combination. I like, I love that. Um, I don't even know what the exact thing is. It's a think tank. I think it's, it's a really the holster. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it just, you kind of wear it as a satchel yeah. and it com contains exactly your DSLR and maybe a 2470 yeah. to eight lens. Um, and it's so easy to just grab and go, and mm -hmm. then at least you don't feel like I've got my camera bag, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I think the most difficult time I had with that was when I did the Inca Trail. Yes. And there's one day where you're climbing some crazy, the, the top of it's called Dead Woman's Pass. Right, <laughs> you're like, I and can it's, relate. It's the biggest climb <laughs> yes, of the day. Yes, yes, I know this one. And so, and every pound that you have of weight on you, you can feel it. Yeah. And I, that day I actually had to decide what to carry and what not to and I gave, I think I took the body and the 24 to 105 but I gave the heavy lens to the porters to take. Okay. <laughs> that thing. Yeah, you're like, thank you so much. Yeah. Was it, the, it was the Inca Trail, the last, did you do the one where the, the, the last night when you walk, it's, it's super dark and you go there for sunrise? Well, we did it a different way. Oh. We, our our um, guide said to us, if we push ourselves a little bit extra each day, we'll get ahead of the crew. Okay. And we got down into the um, into Machu Picchu yeah. actually in the afternoon. Oh, okay. So we didn't do the Sun Gate Sunrise thing. Got it. We got in there in the afternoon. We stayed in the town that night. And we came up the next morning. And hindsight's a fabulous thing. Mm -hmm. And from our point, it was great. For the poor people who walked the trail with us, yeah. they got to the Sun Gate that morning at sunrise and there was a thick fog, Oh. and they couldn't see anything. Can you imagine yeah. walking all that way and getting there and not seeing yeah. anything? Yeah, that's part of it. That's what will happen. You're just gonna open to the weather gods. Yeah, so it was great. We got we actually had Machu Picchu to ourselves, and we had a clear day. It was oh, beautiful. Oh, fabulous, mm. yeah. Thanks so much, Sally. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV, and do not forget, if you subscribe to Adorama TV, you'll see tons of tutorials, tips, content, and whatnot. Check it out.